that mini game is largely a matter of getting off to a good start. Staying happy, sometimes staying healthy in any game, often depends on getting off on the right foot. And taking care to get off on the right foot, so to speak, is really one of the first things you learn about staying healthy around a railroad. from an old head who's been battered, bumped, and bruised just because he was a little bit careless. A little bit careless, that's like being a little bit pregnant. Come on, I'll give you some tips on staying in this game. Like I said, Getting off on the right foot is of first importance on this job and is a good starting point for my empty-headed friend here and me to show you, on the one hand, how to play safe and, on the other, how you can get hurt around engines and cars. The right foot to get off with is the trailing foot, the one opposite the direction you're going. Of course, you're looking ahead. Put that foot near the ground so you step, not jump off. Make it easy on your feet. Let go with your leading hand so you swing away from the car, facing the direction of travel. And your other foot then comes out of the stirrup. When the second foot touches, let go the other hand. Same thing goes for leaving engine or caboose steps. Now see what can happen if you're looking where you've been. Step off with a lead foot and let go with a trailing hand. Slip up on any one of these points and you may fall. Better remember that because we can't pad the 4,800 miles of yard and side tracks on this railroad. There's one right way to get on too. Watch the outside ladder you're going to get on. Grab the rung with both hands. If the car's moving left to right, jab your left foot into the left corner of the stirrup and you're all aboard. If the movement is right to left, put the right foot into the right corner. And as the filly said to the jockey as she backed into the starting gate, there's a wrong way too. Here's going too far with the correct but unsure foot. When you put the proper foot in the wrong corner of the stirrup, it's not only inconvenient, but neither the time nor the place to invent a new dance step. Not only is there unavoidable junk around a yard, but there are some necessary obstacles like switch stands to watch for when you're getting off. Always ride past these obstacles rather than dodging them. That goes for getting on, too. Move beyond the switch stand before you board. Now, some switch stands have to be closer to a track than others. Watch for these not only when getting on or off, but also when you're riding. Rap like that can really sting. All right, now you're on the car. How do you stay there until you're ready to get off? Nothing to it, you say. Just grab a hold, and you have an unscheduled stop.
ride a car ride the side with both hands and both feet. Same with an engine. One hand free only to give signs. One foot free only when you're ready to get off. You ride not only with both hands and both feet, but with both eyes. This is using your eyes, but not your head. And you're heading for trouble. That sign also means get off. There's really no good reason to ride a footboard since you can do a job like pulling the pin more safely from the step. Pulling pins from the ground, you're naturally walking and looking the same way the car is moving because that's where your signs are coming from. Once the slack is in for sure, the safest way to do it is to use the hand that's next to the car. Doing it cross hand or with both hands will work, but suppose you stumble. While you're fighting for your balance, you're apt to swing between the cars, or at best, make a bad job of it and waste everybody's time. We've been talking about safety around moving cars. You can also get hurt around cars that are standing, or that should be standing. The air hose coupler sometimes called a glad hand. That's a good one, because it can really whack you if you're careless. There's a knack to coupling air hoses that's not only the easiest way, but the safest. Most important, you stand so that you can get out fast if the cars should move. Just like that. This time's false alarm could be next time's real thing. It's like defensive driving, doing one thing and being ready for something else. Keep your ears open for slack running in or out that'll tell you something's about to move. This time, it may be your cut. Just like that. Good work. But don't jump so far out of the frying pan that you leap into the possible fire of something moving down that next track. Now, left hand grabs the nearest hose. Pulls it to you and kinks it. Right hand then takes this hose, and the left hand takes the other hose and raises it to where glad hands are at a right angle. Bring them together and snap them. When you hear the snap, you know they're coupled. A glad hand can be a bad hand if you don't hold a hose when you open the angle cock. Only a dummy would forget this. An angle cock never hurt anybody. But the machinery between it and you certainly can. You've got to lean on the drawbar or knuckle to reach the one across from you. But don't put your hand or your side near an opening that can close. It's not always what's up front that counts. A car has to move only a couple of inches to give you a hell of a squeeze. You know this means stop. You know this means proceed. And as of now, you know that this means don't move this car, this cut, or this engine when you see it on a car, a cut of cars, or an engine. It's called a blue flag. And in daylight, that's just what it is. And that's why blue flagged equipment must never, but never be moved or even touched or ever hidden from view by other equipment. Blue flags are put up by car men and may only be removed by them. If you pull off a blue flag, you're juggling somebody else's life in your hands. And you've also got your walking papers. Now this bag is built to take all the right jabs and left crosses you can give it. The guy's got to be tough in the ring. 
but nobody's tough enough for this kind of fist. Keep out of the way of Knuckles. The rule book says don't cross between cars less than 10 feet apart, but take my advice and make it 15 feet. That's about three Bantamweight fighters laid end to end. Just as you always board a moving car on the side when you're going to ride it, you also do it when you've got to climb for a break. Go as high as you can on the safe outside before you step around to the brake on the end of the car. thing on the way down. Down the outside to the level of the end platform if you're going to cross over. Now, most of you fellas are young and rugged. All of you have two of most everything. Two eyes, two ears, two arms, and so on. But only one back and one neck. Be extra careful not to risk things you've only got one of. A simple operation like setting handbrakes should be done with care. Always doing this the lazy way from the ground is really the hardest and a real strain. Get where your two legs can help your one back. From here, you can do it with one hand and have one left for hanging on, just in case some guy jerks the car. On this type of car, they've given you a safe perch off the ground in case of sudden movement. Railroad cars are just movable boxes, tanks, or platforms. Movable is the magic word. A car often moves without warning. On some tracks, it'll move by itself. Some yards and a lot of sidings are on a grade. Sometimes they'll fool you, they look so level. The best way to ensure a cut doesn't start downgrade by itself or by some careless crew kicking a car against it is to set enough brakes at the lower end to prevent a rollout and disaster. This is a very important thing. So it's been a tough morning and a go eat sign is hard to resist. Now oh, what the hell, one ought to hold them and my gut's growling anyway. First things first, I always say, remember the important things. One of them, is to never turn your back on a potentially hazardous situation like this. Gravity with the horsepower of all the Earth is now the engine. How often have you been a little late discovering a mistake? One more break might have held it. Roller-bearing cars, it's hardly even a race. Yeah. Some things are more important than others. That untamed appetite cost $3,000 just to pick them up and fix them up. And what's inside? Machinery, in this case, busted up just when some guy's jobs depended on it. Some railroad customer's gonna be pretty mad pretty quick. At least no hogs got cut up before their time. This one's empty. But this runaway cut could have hit a car with a man on it. Or an engine with a crew in the cab. Or it could have been a set out on the branch that got away and hit something. Maybe a kid because somebody only did half a job. When you're on a car with no handholds handy, 
Put your feet where they'll brace you for a sudden start or stop. Don't stand or ride where you can get taken by a sneaky, nasty surprise. Now, here's a situation for you. These long draw bar cars are too far apart to jump safely. But some of those still with roof walks or with high brakes still have ladders. And you can climb down one and back up the other. But that other car there is nicely spotted for a lazy man's detour by making a couple of three-foot hops. Remember about cars moving without warning? Well, can't win them all. Just have to climb down. What? No ladders? Oh, that's okay. We'll ask the general yardmaster to send the safety representative with an engine and a car with ladders. Meanwhile, think up a good rule book explanation for jumping from one track to another. Embarrassing, but funny. Not so funny, though, if that cut had moved about a half second later. Now, here's something real foolhardy. It takes only a little more effort and a little more company time to use the catwalk on this kind of car. doesn't hurt. If you've got a wooden leg. Although most accidents involve moving equipment, a man can be far away from a car or an engine and get himself banged up. Just walking around, for instance. Every rail is a hazard to a careless man. One way to tell a guy who hasn't been around very long is to see how he crosses a track. The old head, the careful man, always steps over the rail, never on it. The danger of tripping isn't nearly as high as the danger of slipping. Here's a harmless looking piece of machinery that must be used sensibly. Be careful how you grab a flop over switch. It could do the same thing to your foot. Remember, that chunk of iron is heavy. Keep fingers and feet out from under it. Let's move from plain English to sign language. Now, what does she mean? She waving to me? Oh, I thought she wanted me for something. Or something, but at this distance. Railroad hand and lantern signals have to be readable to the engine crews and your fellow switchmen. The bigger the sign, the easier it is to read. There's no room for fine print in railroad sign language. One aid in poor visibility daylight is the bright cover you're given for your timetables and special rules. This sign is important. Stop. The arm is swung at right angles to the track. The hand makes the lower half of a circle. Now there's another sign even more important. That is the washout. This is a vigorous stop sign or stop right now. It's an emergency signal. It is only given when a quick stop is necessary. Questions? <laughs> 
In daylight, movement signs are directed to the engineer and tell him which way you want the engine to move relative to you. That is, to come to you or go away from you. Notice the rolling over motion of the hand and arm. This means just what it looks like. Come to me. No matter which way the engine is pointed, this signal means come to me. Coming in a little too fast, give him the easy sign like rocking the baby. Send the engine away from you by using one or both arms this way. This is clearly a go-away motion. Seen from a distance, the arms make more of a straight line at shoulder level. Once over lightly. Stop the bottom half of a circle. Come to me, a circular motion. Go away, outward, straight from the shoulder. At night, or even on a murky day, this night sign with a lantern says stop. These don't say come or go, but forward or back up. You must know which way your engine is pointed. Don't forget the washout, but remember it's only for emergency. Stop is the same as in daylight, a low swung arc. Forward is an up and down motion. Night signs tell the engineer whether to set the reverse lever for forward or for backup. Whether you are behind or ahead of the engine, moving it ahead requires a forward sign. Back up is a circle. And whether you are ahead or behind the engine, moving it backward requires a backup sign. In poor visibility daylight or at a great distance from the engineer, use night signs with a red cover or a few Z. Now one more word about night signs. Always hold your lantern so the man getting the sign can see the light. It's been a long day of learning. I hope you've picked up a few tips and are off on the right foot. But I've got my doubts about our poor old tired dummy. <laughs>